in bedrooms across Britain, there's a big problem. This is quiet. The sound of his snoring is like he has swallowed an industrial sized lawnmower. Nearly half of the UK adult population snores. No chance. It's so rife, you could call it an epidemic. I've never heard nothing like that in my life. That's how she sounds. And it's driving the nation mad. Divorce and snoring go hand in hand. I've not slept for 10 years. <laughs> I'm Dr Christian, and in this programme, I'm going to tackle our national snoring crisis. Fighting for breath, and you can see the respiratory muscles contracting. And try to give Britain a good night's sleep. Let's test it. Ah! Ah! Get it off! Neil, get it off! No position and no product is going to help you at all. Great. An operation would help you. I'm going to treat five of the nation's loudest... Proudest like this. and most extreme snorers. It's going to be an intense couple of days. As well as their long suffering partners. I'm going down the stairs. Oh, God, I've had enough. I'm sick to the back. Too. It really does sometimes grind at me. Just can't stick it anymore. With a crack team of experts, we'll delve deep into the snorers' medical issues. Probably one of the worst cases that I've ever seen of sleep apnea. <laughs> and there he goes and their relationships. Dave oversteps Mark sometimes. Sometimes I'll find it hard to say, I'm sorry. Because what can feel like just a nighttime nuisance could actually threaten both your relationship This is why you don't sleep together. And your life. Uh, Did he stop breathing? Oh. Yeah. Tonight, across the UK, 15 million people will be causing snoring pandemonium. I've selected five of the country's biggest snorers, and I'm going to pull out all the stops to help them and Great Britain. I've set up my very own Snore Camp HQ, a state-of-the-art lab where these titanic snorers will be kept in overnight and assessed. Whilst the patients stay over, their partners will be in a nearby hotel getting a good night's sleep. Because I'll be putting their relationships under the microscope as well. Welcome to Snore Camp. Thank you very much. My chosen snorers have arrived. Oh, this is nice. Morning. Hi, yeah. Oh, this is it. Good morning. Good morning. Can I take your names, please? It's Miss Maria. Okay, if you'd like to go check yourselves in, and then we'll come and collect you in a little while. Thank you. Thank you. Desperate for help is Chris from Manchester. He snores as loudly as a hairdryer and is ordered to sleep on a different floor by his wife, Maria. I'm getting quite used to sleeping separately. It's going to get to the point where I don't want you back in my bed. It's our bed, just oh. point out. Not in my bed, because that's a lie. We it's all sleep on the sofa and the bed. <laughs> so I don't have to listen or anticipate you, the next chorus of the Chris choir. For this couple, Snore Camp is the last chance saloon. The sound of his snoring is like he has swallowed an industrial sized lawnmower. Chris and Maria have been together for 13 years, but the snoring is driving Maria up the wall. In my opinion, divorce and snoring go hand in hand. And the fact no. that you question it, that's the fact that you question You have no idea. I, you can't divorce someone because they snore. It's natural. It's, it's maybe natural, but it's lack of sleep. So you and you have no control over it if you're asleep. Yeah, but that doesn't make it OK. Divorce is a bit extreme, isn't it? Come on. The couple live with their three children, who are equally in despair at the nocturnal racket. My scales are 1 to 10, and my dad snores 10. <laughs> like, like, highest 10 ever. It's like a pig when it's sleeping, basically. Mm -hmm. He needs to appreciate how serious it is. That when I say to you about snoring, I always get, it's not my fault. It isn't. It's not no, my it fault. Isn't. 
No, it isn't your fault, but you could do more around the house. You could help more in other ways to make up for her, or at least try and seem a bit more apologetic. I've not slept for 10 years. For Chris and our other snorers, it's time to get to work. Right, guys, welcome to Snore Camp. You have been chosen because you are Britain's snoring elite. The idea is that one half of the couple is going to stay here and try and sleep for the night and hopefully snore like the clappers. Mm -hmm. So Mike and I can assess you. The other half of you are going to go away, have a drink, relax, get a proper night's sleep. <laughs> nice. <laughs> How does that sound? Great. great. Yeah? That sounds great. I've got my team of experts with me. This is Mike, who is kind of Mr. Snore, or Dr. Snore, we should say. Well, I'm an ear, nose and throat surgeon, and I will find out why your snorers, and hopefully there'll be some treatment for you along the way. Louise is a psychosexual therapist in a nutshell. I'm an expert in sex and relationships, so I'll be listening to what you have to say, but I'll also be watching the energy between you. So how do you feel about that? I snore horrendously, and I'm here to uh, hopefully get it sorted out. I dearly love to get this sorted so he can get a decent night's sleep. I'm really glad there's another lady snorer because it's all right when the men snore because it's a bit of a laugh, but with the ladies, and that's a bit embarrassing. Lynn from Gravesend snores as loudly as an air conditioning unit, but partner Dave is struggling to keep his cool. That's how she sounds. They've been dating for three months after meeting online. The moment he walked in, it was it was instantaneous. It's a bit like putting on a comfy pair of slippers. Yeah, well, I got you. There's only one bit about you I don't like. Yeah. And she goes, what's that? I go, <laughs> the snoring. <laughs> it really does sometimes grind at me. And I, it's like, oh, no. <laughs> It is embarrassing and I laugh about it because if I didn't laugh about it, I'd cry. Lynn is terrified her snoring will sound the death knell for her blossoming romance. It would be awful if a relationship didn't bloom because of my snoring. Now I'm 66, going on 67, and I need to have some sleep. My experts are about to work their genius on our epic snorers. But in order to be able to treat them, we need to understand how snoring works. Snoring occurs when the nasal or throat tissues relax during sleep and then vibrate. Sleeping on your back loosens the throat muscles, which can sag in the airway and wreak havoc. The airway may also be narrowed due to excess fat, increasing your chances of snoring. Alcohol can also relax the muscles, so best to lay off the sauce if you want a quiet night. And a congested nose can also lead to some extremely unusual sounds. Right now, my monumental snorers have been put through their paces by my experts. Hi! ENT surgeon and snoring connoisseur Mike. The tonsils are enlarged. I think you might have big adenoids as well. And relationship and intimacy expert Louise. It's both of your moods that get impacted. Mike is looking for physical abnormalities that could cause snoring. Right side is blocked. Oh. Whilst Louise is exploring the damage that snoring is causing to their relationship. Fair enough, he'll say he can't help the snoring, which he can't, I mm -hmm. understand that. Mm -hmm. But he knows that I'm tired, so he could do more in other ways, mm. but he doesn't. Mm. So I'm expected to get four hours sleep at night, work full time, cook, clean, I don't dispute bath. I know you do a lot. Chris, it sounds like you've been a little slow in realising yeah. there's a problem. I would say I'm very stubborn. Because I'm stubborn, I won't sort of back down. Maria, what do you think Chris should do? I'd like you to care more. But I do care. That's the thing I do. No, you say you do. What exactly do you need? How would you know you're cared for? If he was to do more. What does do more? Is that chores in the house? Yeah, just things in that. Just things in the house. It sounds so over dramatic when it's all down to snoring, but when it in, when it's like the final straw and it impacts everything—work, family life 
Because when you're exhausted, functioning is so, it's so difficult. I do understand that something needs to change. Mm -hmm. I'm just unsure of how. I can feel how you're both struggling mm. and not getting what you need. This is a relationship in crisis. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up, sufferers across the UK try out some alternative snore remedies. Let's test it. And in my clinic, we discover the frightening true impact snoring can have. Did he stop breathing? Yeah. Good morning, West Midlands Police. How can I help? What's the issue, sir? Yes, it's my, it's my wife. Uh, she keeps snoring. You ring in because your wife keeps snoring? She's really disturbing me. I don't know what to do. I will advise you, sir, that this isn't a police matter, by the way. The police might disagree, but for many Brits, snoring clearly is an emergency. I'm Dr Christian, and I'm determined to give this country some peace and quiet. I've recruited five of Britain's most monumental snorers, and I brought them here to Snore Camp for assessment. Next to put his nose in the firing line is Michael, who's come from Swansea with his partner Claire. How long have you been snoring for? As long as uh, I can remember. Has anybody ever mentioned you stopping breathing at, completely at night? Apnea? I don't notice that. Never noticed that. He just no, snores all night long. Just snores. Just gonna have a look at your face. With necks a bit overweight. Tried remedies. I've tried the strip on the nose. I also found something on the internet uh, that goes up your nose. Uh, but none of those have worked. Michael goes as loudly as a lawnmower, and the couple are hoping to put his snoring out to grass for good. I think your mum said about putting some cream or something on your chest. Oh, that Vicks, didn't work. Vicks, she said, rub Vicks on your chest, Michael. That'll sort it. Well, that and, didn't uh, work either. That didn't work either. <laughs> It happens every every single night. When you you don't get sleep, you get very, you know, cross. And I will kick him and I'll nudge him and I'll say, oh, for goodness sake, Mike, shut up! Because <laughs> sometimes you ju I just can't stick it anymore. Michael and Claire have been together for four years and share a home with her two sons. It's just like, like nothing I've ever heard before. It's like animal noises, creature noises. <laughs> It can be quite scary when you don't uh, realise it's coming, like, but it's loud. I will try anything to get my snoring stopped. Anything, you know, you name it, I will try it. It's easy to see why people are so desperate to stop their snoring. And it's why we Brits spend nearly £50 million a year on treatments. But some of those treatments are definitely more effective than others. So I've asked a selection of snorers from across the UK to test some of them out. It's long been asserted that garlic is a potential alternative remedy for snoring. You've got to chew one of these and swallow it. But is it an old wives' tale? <laughs> what y'all laughing for? Y'all got to try it as well. <laughs> I try it, so I don't like garlic. Yeah, it goes. <laughs> you ready, Jeanette? <laughs> nice. But did the garlic cut the mustard? You OK? Feels sick. Do you? Yeah. What, because of the garlic? Yeah, burnt me tongue. Did it work? No. It did not work at all, to be honest. It felt it was waste. <laughs> Honestly, oh, God, I'm beat. I was aware of the smell. Uh, <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> yeah, three feet back. <laughs> the garlic, I'm sorry, is going to have to be a thumbs down. Definitely. Things you do to stop snoring. Back at HQ, initial assessments are done, and it's time for the couples to part. So we can monitor our snorers overnight. This will be the last time they see each other before we unravel the true scale of their problems. 
for the snorer's worn-out partners. Cheers, everyone. It's a chance to let off some steam. What are things going to happen across there? Five of Britain's biggest snorers in one building is horrendous. That's quite a strain on the building, though. They're all on one floor as well, aren't they? It's a strain on the country. <laughs> Desperate for some peace is long-distance lorry driver Stuart from Warrington. Stuart's been living with his partner Ben for two years, and Ben snores as loudly as a London tube train. Being a snorer from being a child, um, it has been quite annoying, and I've never heard of anyone snoring from being a baby all the way through uh, being a teenager to so adulthood. If anyone seriously needs their rest, it's a truck driver. With my job, I need quite a lot of sleep. I think for our future, we need to get it sorted. And Ben's afraid the snoring will cause their romance to crash. My relationship with Stuart's my first long-term relationship. Get a bit angry when I don't get to sleep. Grouchy. Yeah, <laughs> stroppy. Grouchy. Just leave me alone, be quiet, don't touch me. I'd like to ideally not snore anymore. <laughs> Back at Snorer Command Centre, it's the last supper before our patients are monitored for the night. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Quick, hide the chips. <laughs> it's the smell of unhealthy food. <laughs> what I could do with. What are you having? Worms? Yeah, a chow mein. I would normally have a salad with the... Yeah, yeah. yeah right. It's just tonight as a special yeah, night, Yeah, it is, right? yeah. yeah I want them to recreate their typical pre-sleep conditions, so I've asked them to all order their favourite takeaway. Yeah. And you're having a drink? Because you'd normally have a drink? Yeah. yeah. Good, very important. It's got to be fairly consistent yeah. until you go into the weird bedroom that doesn't feel anything like your own. <laughs> but up until that point, it's got to be. But I think you'll be fine. You know, there's not much more to say to you now. We've got to get no. you sleep. And that's when we'll be really assessing you and working out where your snoring's potentially coming from and therefore what yeah. hopefully we can do about it. I'm going to have to go on a diet. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to make the most of it. Michelle from Newcastle is a mega snorer. Sleeping next to her is like sharing a bed with a coffee grinder. This is cool. I sleep in a spare room, though. I, I uh, give you a bit of respite. After I've had about two or three days where I've had virtually no sleep and my eyes are hanging down, she'll nip next door in the spare room and have a night in there, give me a solid sleep, till about half past three when I hear her through the wall. Michelle and Ken met in their teens and have been married for 32 years. I think he's just having his arm. I've snored. All night, every night, for the last 18 months, and it, before that it was intermittently more so when you'd had a drink. It's the gin. That's what it is, it's the you gin. You don't drink gin every night. I do think it's me weight, but I've tried as many diets. Try to get you to do exercise for years and she will not be interested. Never happen. I don't do the E word, Ken. <laughs> I don't do it. <laughs> But in the last few years, Michelle's snoring has gone stratospheric. Me having to go and sleep in the, the spare bed four, four nights a week, it'll get to a point where it's going to be every night. Just had concerns about losing intimacy. It needs something. It does. Mm -hmm. I'm at the point now, I've tried everything. It's my last resort, really. Fingers crossed. It's crunch time for these extreme snorers. I'm looking forward to tomorrow, seeing the results, seeing exactly how bad I am, and where I rate compared to other snorers. You know, it's the microphone on the bedside table. Oh my God. <laughs> I think I'll snore tonight, because I've had three gins. We'll see what tomorrow brings. Bye-bye. I'm going to sleep like a log, as usual and I have no doubts in my mind that I'm going to snore as well because it's just a given with me. This is our chance to get to the root of their issues. So 
Ben here is a very high pitched snoring, which is quite hard to live with. He's the one we think probably has these swollen glands, the adenoids and, yeah. and, and tonsils. It's, it's a classic tongue based snore. They're pretty mild out there. Yeah. The absolute worst case scenario would be if the snoring was to cause someone to regularly stop breathing. So Lynn is purring away. But this is what we call stertor, this is noisy breathing without obstruction. But I think because of the shape of her jaw and her teeth, she may need a CPAP machine, or one of those airway machines. Like a reverse vacuum cleaner? Yeah. So here's Michelle, it's quite a good recovery position there. Actually. Very good actually, <laughs> yes it is. Optimum airway and still snoring. That means not only is it a weight related problem, but there's something else going on. So Chris is snoring now. What yes, it's a pretty loud snoring. Chris has got a very blocked nose, so we expect him to be mouth breathing. Last up is Michael. Are there any breathing now? He's fighting for breath, and you can see his respiratory muscles contracting. <laughs> Time those apneic episodes at about 15 seconds at the moment. Not breathing. No. It's actually quite a long one. This is where you start to get a bit alarmed. Mm. God, this is quite a long one. And there he goes. Oh, even I feel a bit breathless. <laughs> What's happening during that? His conscious level is rising every time he gets distressed, waking himself up. He's never drifting into that proper, refreshing phase of sleep. He's getting worse, Michael. He's shaking now. Quite distressing to watch, isn't it? Very, actually. He's on his back now. And he's not breathing at all. It's going on for a good 30 seconds now. This is serious. <laughs> I'm Dr. Christian, and I'm committed to rescuing Britain from a great snoring onslaught. I've enlisted five of the country's biggest snorers. But even I was shocked at what we discovered. This is serious. This is where you start to get a bit alarmed. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What I'm going to do is play you footage from each one of you snoring and then I'll talk you through the medical bits and what I think is going on and what we can do about it. Lynn, let's have a look at you. Here we go. The next thing I want to talk about is anatomical with you. You've got quite a small yeah. ladylike jaw. Your tongue's probably going back, you know, and that's what's creating the sound as your tongue vibrates. The next thing for you is something called a CPAP machine that yeah. blows air mm -hmm. down a pipe yeah. over your nose and mouth that keeps your airway open. Right. I think that will sort it out. Lovely. I'm looking forward to starting treatment, to see what works. If they can either halve what you do or cure it, I'll be happy. Next up is Michelle. Mm. 
Now you're not going to like this next bit, but Weird. your number yes, and you. your number one friend is going to be weight loss. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The second thing for you is we need a little thing that you wear around at night, and it just pulls your jaw forward like this until the weight loss is really made progress. You right. know. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully we'll be skinny minis and not snoring, and time will tell. Eh? Next up is Chris. You've got, I think, two main things going on. First of all is you've got a really, really deviated septum and an almost blocked side of your nose, all right? So no position and no product is actually going to help you at all. Great. An operation would help you. And I think that would really quite successfully sort you out. As with any surgery, you know, there's risks as such, and it's always that, what if I don't wake up? Or it's, it's silly things to worry about, I know, but it is a worry I have. I'd almost, well, I had given up. I was complete, feeling completely numb, but I think there is a little bit of hope. And if we do as we've, you know, been advised and the things like that, maybe we can get through it. Next, it's Ben. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> There's a really, really simple solution for you. You need your tonsils and adenoids out. Just whip them out. I don't think you'll snore anymore. It's exactly the story that my mum's told me. Mums are always right, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> it is quite daunting, obviously. It's still an operation, um, especially if I do wake up after the operation and it's not solved the issue, because I will be wondering where to go from there. This journey is, well, both of us together. Ben's having the operation, but I'm going to be there right behind him. So, Michael. Hi. I'm going to warn you now. You might find this a little bit alarming to watch. And I want you to focus on the silence. Did he stop breathing? Yeah. yeah. <gasps> That's you not breathing at all for 30 seconds. <gasps> where you don't breathe at all. Oh my God. <clears throat> it's putting massive strain on your heart and it's risking your life. I was pretty close to tears watching that. Probably one of the worst cases that I've ever seen of sleep apnea. It puts tremendous strain on, on your heart. This is the sort of, the ugly face of snoring. And you can see it's really quite severe and very, very distressing to watch. It's you literally fighting for your life. Shocked and worried. That's... Don't worry. It's treatable, all right? CPAP machine for you, all right? And weight loss, weight loss, weight loss. Because you're all neck. You do it together. I somehow feel that having seen that, that's going to be your motivation for doing something about oh, it. Definitely, yeah. Watching the video was oh, bloody hell. That was really scary, really scary. I, just, I didn't know I did all that in my sleep. Well, it was a huge shock for our snorers, witnessing Michael struggling for breath. But weight loss and a CPAP machine should make a huge difference to his life. For less serious cases of snoring, there are loads of different treatments available, and my band of testers have tried some of them out. A snore stopper, self-adhesive electrodes. Our guinea pigs are trying a bracelet that emits an electric shock when snoring is detected. Let's test it. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the answer, or will it be a shocker? It didn't work. And to be honest, I think to give yourself an electric shock when you're snoring really isn't the way to go. 
um, I would have to be honest. I'm not sure. I think it was done properly. It would be okay. Yeah. That's called revenge on <laughs> her part. You can tell how he chucked me. Look at my hair. For me, he's a certain no. In London, Ben, who's been snoring since he was a baby, is about to go under the knife. His tonsils are being lasered out. They've been the key cause of his snoring for the last 23 years. So I've decided to go in for this operation for Stuart, also for myself. Like explained, there could be complications further down the line, more risk of sleep apnea, and I mean, we've seen what that does with Michael. It was terrifying. I can't go on not sleeping. It's hard for me to say because obviously I love Ben so much. I wouldn't say that we'd break up. It, it would put some serious impact on our relationship though. Um, you know, I don't know where we'd go. Up in Newcastle. Just received the email for uh, the diet plan and I want to open it up and have a look. Snora Michelle and husband Ken are on strict orders to lose weight. No, we're just, we've done it, so we'll see how long this lasts. Right? I'm wondering whether we need some of this after we've had the green juice. Um, the trolley's not big enough though, because we'll probably need about 10 packs. To have the best chance of stopping snoring, Michelle must lose weight to reduce that excess tissue around her neck area. Here's Michelle with our first uh, proper evening meal. <laughs> it's 6am in London and intensive snorer Chris is about to have a life-changing surgery. I'm feeling a bit uh, nervous about the operation. Minimal as they are, there is always risk of operations. I did debate not having it um, and decided to go with it in the end. My ENT surgeon Mike will be attempting to straighten Chris's deviated nasal septum. Um, we're doing septum plastic. Snoring is often seen as just a laughing matter, but for some, the only answer to their prayers is medical intervention. But it's not just Chris's quality of sleep that's on the line, it's his entire relationship as well. Hopefully, with this, things will get better. Make or break. <laughs> Mike's not only holding uh, the resolution to Chris's snoring in, in his hand, but also the potential to save my marriage. My mission to cure this country's snoring crisis is at full speed. I've diagnosed five of the nation's loudest snorers in a bid to get rid of their problems once and for all. We start to get a bit alarmed. Michael has been one of the most frightening cases of sleep apnea I've ever seen. That's you not breathing at all. So I've sent him to a top sleep specialist to sort him out. It's been quite emotional in the last couple of weeks, really. Hopefully today we'll put a stop to all of that. So if you are watching TV, would you have no chance, slight chance, moderate chance, or high chance of falling asleep? High chance. Okay. If you're sitting and reading? High chance. Okay. If you're sitting in a public place, for example, a theatre or a meeting? Oh, high chance. <laughs> Brilliant. Come over. Michael's sleep apnea causes him to suffocate repeatedly throughout the night, and it's so severe that he needs a machine to help him breathe. So this is the CPAP device. Let's just try this one. So we pop it over our head. That just sits just around the nasal area. Just breathe away, just breathe away. How does that feel? Good. 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 I'm going to get you to lie down now. Have a little sleep <laughs> so that you're getting used to it. Okay. How do you feel? Sleepy. OK. Just breathe away through your nose and your mouth. God, he's not making a noise. Mm. 
Following his operation, I'm keen for snorer Chris and his wife Maria to address their serious relationship issues his snoring has caused. So I've sent them to romance guru Louise for an intensive session. We're still sleeping separately. <laughs> and I do think it could go either way, to be fair. Being together or being separate, whichever way she thinks is going to work for us. A bit apprehensive about seeing Louise today. Maria has quite openly told me that she is ready to be a single mum, if she has to be, which worries me. Last time I spoke to you, I felt this is a couple in crisis. Yeah. Getting close to a make or break point, mm -hmm. yeah? Definitely. I'll do a little process with each of you. That's called heart talk. Are you open for that? Definitely. Yeah. Great. So Maria, both feet on the floor. Place your right hand over your heart. What is your heart feeling? It's feeling sad, yeah. Things can be so much better. By working together, not against each other all the time. It sounds like you really miss Chris next to you. We were a great team. It's just sad. I feel really lonely. Slowly and gently, Open your eyes and look at Chris. And tell him that you miss him. I miss you and I miss us. Thank you, Maria. Chris, would you like to come up here? And how's your heart doing? It hurts. I need to feel I'm loved, because I do, I do love her. And it sounds like you really miss her too. God. I miss those. This is not divorce material. And this is the both of you learning to communicate. The message that's coming across to Maria is you don't care. Let her know you care. And Maria, it seems like you have an expectation of Chris not being there. But he's there. I want to go up and give him a hug. Why don't you? <laughs> Please. <laughs> feeling really positive about the future. Things that we don't do for each other are so obvious, but we needed somebody else to say, Marie, you need to do this, or Chris, you need to do that. But hopeful, because if we can do that, then hopefully things will be back on track. And she's told us that we're not allowed to divorce, so that's fantastic. Maria, you can't leave me. Although the relationship damage done by snoring is often severe, with the right motivation, it can be fixed. Instructions. Oh, God, it's going to be hours doing this. In Wales, Michael's potentially life saving medical equipment has arrived. Mike? Yeah? Just plug it in. Lynn has also been given a CPAP machine to open her airways and ease her snoring. I just press the power button and press the ramp, and if you listen to me, you can hear the air coming out. OK, let's find out what it's like. Michelle has been sent a mandibular advancement device, which opens the airways by moving the lower jaw forward. Here goes. Look at it. See, that the uh, jaws off James Bond. <laughs> Let's just hope that he uh, does have a good night's sleep. My experts and I have done everything we can for our gang of extreme snorers. But will it be enough to stop their snoring once and for all? It's been a few weeks since I sent my snorers away with their treatment plans. It's time now to see if they've worked. How are you all? Welcome back. Michelle. Yeah. How are you? 
I'm absolutely fine. Tell me about whether you're still snoring or not. I am, but it's not on the level. Half is not even a third of the level. And last night I got no. eight hours sleep, no noise, no nothing. First time in, for I can remember actually. Really? For years, uh, Tell me what's changed for you. I've lost uh, 26 pounds and Michelle's lost. One stone, two pounds. And how do you feel for that? Brilliant. Perky? Much, much better, yeah. Yeah? So, Ben, you've had an operation. I have. What's changed as a result of that operation? Uh, Snoring-wise, a still bit snore. snore, but you not as much. still snore. Is he still sleeping on his back? Yeah, basically. Because what might benefit next for you is trying to get you to sleep on your side, and the other thing might be trying to open your nostrils up a little bit more. So, Lynn and Dave, yes. welcome back. Tell us what's changed for you guys. I don't snore anymore. Not at all? No, not at all. That's impressive. And I feel like a different person. So, Chris and Maria? The snoring did get a lot yeah. better, a lot, yeah, lot better. Yeah, definitely. And then it slowly started coming back up again. So I'm not quite sure. I'm hoping it's just because you've had a bit of a cold. I've had a bit of a cold. Getting a blocked nose, if you're, you know, the airways are quite narrowed. As soon as you get a cold or anything like that, whoom, they're going to completely block and the snoring will come back. But it will only be temporary. I yes. like him again now. Do you? <laughs> Good. I like you again. So, Michael and Claire. Michael, you know I was worried about you. I do, yeah. And I think you distressed everybody in this room when they mm. watched you sleeping. What's changed now? From the first night, I woke up the morning after, 10 hours solid sleep, which is unheard of with me. Yeah. I was so refreshed after one night, after the first night it? of it. It's extraordinary. Superb. He is like a completely different man. I never, ever fall asleep during the day, which I was doing on a daily basis, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, every At day. Any time every day. day. So it's, it's, it's all good. Oh, God, I'm so glad I've done it, really. So listen, I want you to know, I am really, really proud of you because what you've done hasn't been easy. You've taken the step to come forward, to admit you've got a problem. You've had to learn a lot about yourselves, haven't you? Some of you have had to take a bit of criticism and you've done that nobly on the chin and that's great. You've listened to advice, you've made changes and I think you are all, I hope, much healthier and happier for that. Are you? Yes. Yes. Definitely, yes. It's truly amazing to see how well the snores have responded to their treatments. And after their life-changing experience, Claire and Michael have written down some thoughts to share with each other. It's not often that you get a second chance of love in life. And I've... Oh my God. And I've been lucky enough... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I would like to thank Claire for being absolutely fantastic and understanding throughout this all. I really couldn't have done it without you, Claire. And uh, now, something else. We've been together for a few years now, and I think it's about time that uh, we should uh, strengthen our relationship. So, uh, I would like to uh, ask you to marry me. Well, of course I will. <laughs> I think group hug, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Shall we? Yeah. Come on now. Group hug. Keep it up. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs>